everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Uh, it has been a minute since I've actually shot something, I think maybe once in the last, what, four, five, six, seven, maybe once in the last week. Uh, anything else that's been posted has been a repost uh, and for obvious reasons. And before I get through this, uh, for the last time, I want to really take time to thank everybody who showed mad love and support, sent prayers, condolences uh, at the loss of my mom. We laid her to rest Saturday, an unbelievably beautiful ceremony, uh, a chance for healing to begin and a celebration of some unbelievable accomplishments, man. I'm blessed to come from a family that can say they touch the things that most people won't touch. And my mom, as a vocalist and gospel artist, launched something. And from that tree came my brother, who was also a recorder, and uh, two internationally renowned drummers. Uh, that's just in the music side of things. And it all came from uh, her laying the foundation and opening doors. Um, again, Thank you guys so much. Um, before I get started on what I want to talk about, which is sort of a segue out of my mom and family, uh, not directly or specifically, but the importance of family and where we are as a people because we don't value family. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you, if you like what you hear, click the, click the like button. Uh, click the share button, click the subscribe button. If you believe in the work we do uh, consistently and have done for 30 years now at the Odyssey Project, and I just shared earlier today uh, that we are doing a symposium uh, in the Houston area um, where we are trying to bridge the gap between law enforcement and uh, reduce recidivism, uh, create more in-community programs that actually work. Uh, so I get to design them, uh, and we're doing a symposium on that. I'm lecturing, and that's going to be on the 18th of November. Um, and so it's a lot going on, but we would really love to have your financial support, especially when it comes to this 18-month resource research uh, project that I am undertaking right now directly uh, aligned with um, the lack of resources and the lack of proper policy to make it easier for family to help adult males who are dealing with severe psychosis. And that could be anything from bi bipolar disorder to paranoid schizophrenia and the net need for that because what we're doing is we are seeing a major uh, spike in homelessness and incarceration primarily due to mental health uh, issues or mental illness and this is something that we need to be dealing with because a lot of these men can be functional and positive contributors to the community and it uh, also uh, their diagnosis and their behavior also contributes to adverse childhood experiences or ACEs and I tie all of this up in the research but I'm also going to be lecturing on it on the 18th if you believe in what I do you believe in the work I've done if you've read about it in the books uh, the articles the lectures you've been present at the lectures you know uh, the depths I go at to find solutions to the enigmatic issues we face in our community. So again, uh, your support would be greatly appreciated. With that being said, we are going to have to grapple with the reality and the truth that none of the things we aspire to, none of the things that we talk about, we want to accomplish freedom, liberation, empowerment, autonomy, all these things we talk about in, 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 in grandeur and in, in, in an aspiration 
means absolutely nothing if we don't have the foundation on which we can build it. And the foundation on which you build power is the family. Without the family, there cannot be a consistent implication of values into the minds and psyches of young children who will grow up and walk out, live out, act out, and defend those values. When you don't have a family core masculine energy and feminine energy present in homes in large uh, ratios, you're going to have a pro problem. When you look at the decline in our ability to function, uh, they, they want to sell you the idea that we have never functioned well outside of slavery. The truth is we have done some exceptional and extraordinary things uh, shortly removed from slavery. You got to think that the highly celebrated and taught it uh, Tulsa subdivision of Greenwood, better known as uh, Black Wall Street, was what, 19, in the early 1900s. So we're talking 30 years out of slavery. We got our own community. We're thriving. We are practicing group, group economics. We are living within an enclave and is supporting ourselves much in the way you see other enclaves like Asians and Latinos and Italians and Arabs and so many more do today. And so what happens is we move through uh, re-injury after re-injury from black codes to convict leasing to redlining to benign neglect to urban renewal to Jim Crow segregation and on down the line. We traverse all of those challenges and we hold together until there is a decisive and engineered move to uh, separate and distinguish, uh, I mean, extinguish the black family nucleus. We go from 1960 to a, I mean, at, at a time where 75% of black children were born into two parent households to today where 75% are born into single parent households. Uh, we see a slight improvement over the last couple of years, but I mean, compared to what has happened, it's, it's very marginal and it is not enough to see any major shift because of the damage done by the broken home. See, the broken home isn't just a problem. The broken broken home takes away the ability to establish principles. Our, our VIPs, our values, our interests, our principles and the way we operate. The ability to determine and establish a sense of self. We suffer an identity crisis because there's no place and no universal form of establishing identity. We have a problem in properly socializing our children, especially our black males, because we don't have black men in the home to model manhood. And because of that, we lose the idea of who we are and we're searching for ourselves. And when you don't know who you are and you're searching, everyone has an answer for you, but it's always to benefit them. And we're seeing that in our outcomes and what I'm trying to get across is at some point we are going to have to look into programs that support and promote uh, the family. We are going to have to get out of the mindset of individuality and this idea of being independent uh, and, and how that independence translates into strength. It actually doesn't. All the ones pushing this whole idea of independence. I'm not saying that you don't have the ability to take care of yourself. What I'm saying is this pride that we tend to take in ourselves for not needing anyone, not willing to work with anyone, not depending upon. The whole thing is the dependence upon one another is where our strength comes in. When you depend upon something, you value it. When you value it, you will stand up for it. You will hold on to it. You will... Um, treated with care and kindness and appreciation. We have been trained to not care about ourselves because we don't value ourselves and we think that everything we need is within ourselves and we have our women killing, killing themselves trying to be strong, black, independent women when that's not how things work. Uh, it sounds good. You know, black girl magic, man, that sounds nice, don't it? Then you talk about... Uh, if it's not black girl magic, what is it? It's um, it's it's strong black woman, and boy, my sisters get mad at mad at me when I talk about uh, how I feel about the strong black woman. And my thing is, our women are strong. Nobody has to say they're strong. 
Nobody has to validate their strength. Our women are strong. They are resilient. They are powerful. They are close to magical at the stuff that they are capable of doing. My issue with the notion of the strong black woman isn't because I don't believe she's strong or I don't want to celebrate her. I celebrate her because I come from her. I celebrate her because I love her and I want to love and build with her. So it's not that. What is it? It is anytime I hear strong black woman, it's because a black woman is doing something on her own by herself that she shouldn't have to do. And it bothers me that it's celebrated because when you celebrate it for something, you tend to lean into it and identify with it. And you tend to move yourself away from what you actually need. And that is a man to cover you. And that covering comes with provision. It comes with protection. It comes with guidance. It comes with a form of nurturing that very few of us are even aware of. When you say nurturing, the last thing you think about is a man, but a man nurtures visions. He nurtures hopes. He nurtures inspirations. He nurtures so much. And we have lost that because we are so into what we think people will say about us as individuals that we don't see the power of our collective coming, our collective force. And so when I talk about this, it's with a passion uh, from a birth, from an understanding of what's possible if we allow ourselves to revisit the importance of family. Family has been a staple for millenniums. And here we are now trying to rewrite what has always been. And we are constantly not marrying uh, the concept and ideology with the outcome. We keep talking about how bad things are getting, but we keep missing the fact they're getting that way because we've left what works. We are trying to create a new way of doing something when there's one way to do it. The family is a part of a social construct for social creatures as mammals with social creatures. It means that we work better when we are functioning within a system with one another where we have roles, where we have responsibilities, where we have expectations. And when we get outside of that, the entire construct begins to crumble and we can't hold it up on our own and we become frustrated because we've been told we don't need anybody. Well, we need other people. We need friends, we need loved ones, we need spouses and we need someone. You know, every man needs that woman that balances him. Every woman needs that man who can cover and see inside of her with his vision. Uh, the way she can't, she can feel better than he can, but he can see better. That's why the vision comes to the man. And, 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 and he, he can see in her the things she doesn't see and he can speak it. He can declare it. He can talk over. He is in a way, a prophet of his family. He's speaking things that are not that he sees and they are becoming. But when you don't have that, what happens? You start to pay attention to what's on the phone. You start to pay attention to what's being posted. You start to pay attention to what's in the music and you lose sight of the ability and the power to speak into the lives and to be spoken into, to be lifted, to be healed, to be made whole. And it's a problem. We've got to rescue the idea and the notion of the importance of the black family. And on that note, I'm not gonna hold it long, but I had to visit that. I had to talk about that. And these are the reasons we have the programs we have at the Odyssey Project, because we can talk about a bunch of things, but if you don't have a way to uh, program it into the minds of the people who must walk it out and carry it out, it is a moot point. If you don't have the ability to sit up and say over and over and over again through a systematic force of inculcation that this is who you are, this is what you do, this is how we behave, this is what we are capable of, this is how beautiful you are, this is how smart you are, this is how strong you are. If you don't have that ability, then what ends up happening is they are told the opposite by those who benefit from their identity crisis. So again, it's going to be up to us to do something to change that. So again, I'm asking you to rally with me, to stand with me, to work with me, to, to uh, support the push that I am going to be undertaking in the coming year to change the narrative 
and it's possible. It's not going to be easy. It's not a magical incantation. It's not some magic word that you can uh, pronounce and then everything falls into place. It's consistent, pervasive, unyielding work that's going to bring about the change. I'm all in and I'm challenging everybody who truly believes in black empowerment, not just as some moniker or some um, mo motto, but as in a new way of life so that our children and their children and their children live lives that we dreamt of. That's the big thing. That is the passing down of a legacy. The legacy is the thing that you planted that you don't live long enough to see come to fruition. But if you don't plant it, it never happens. That's the thing that I'm pushing for. That's the thing that I'm demanding. So on that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, it's time for me to unwind, talk a little noise with the guys uh, and stay tuned. Uh, we are coming. I'm executive producing a new podcast from inside of the Cigar Lounge uh, called Up in Smoke. And this is going to be predominantly black men, uh, seasoned black men, mostly professional. Most of the guys are going to be uh, uh, high wage earners. Uh, it's a couple of young cats that I'm bringing in personally that I've mentored that are rapidly on the rise and I see them as those who I pass the torch to and we're going to have conversations about what's important relationships with women relationships with our children mental health business ownership um, the, we're going to have a lot of conversations about the gender war and what we can do to stop it uh, the responsibility and role we play in it, and we have a lot, we have those conversations. The role we play in it, what we need to do different, but also to inform and, and talk about in a way that our women can listen what we feel you guys, ladies, are doing that isn't working, that's working against you and working against us. And this is going to be a weekly podcast. Um, We've already started putting production into motion. So within uh, the next four weeks, we hope to have the first uh, episode up, edited, produ produced. Um, and I'm excited about it because the conversation we have, and this is why I love these guys. Uh, instead of talking women down, instead of sitting up talking like we're still 20 and 25, we talk solutions. We talk uh, problem solving. We talk... Uh, the beauty of our women. We hold our women to a higher standard. We will literally catch a young lady uh, in, in, in the cigar shop that isn't, you know, moving as we think a lady should move. And we talk to her. We don't judge her. We don't, you know, we, but hey, look, your results that you're getting is because and catch young brothers. I, I catch my time. Hey, man, what was that you just said? What was that about? We don't do that. And you'd be surprised how you get to set the culture. How you get to set the culture. But anyway, that's that. So I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I want to thank you guys for hanging in and listening to me again show some love show some support hit the like button hit the share button subscribe on that note i'm out take care